How efficient is your design workflow? Automating design tasks with Kittle. How to make your whole process more effective, more smooth, but mostly more fun. Today's video is sponsored by Kittle. Now you guys know, even though I love my money, I don't like taking many sponsors. I genuinely wouldn't be endorsing Kittle if I didn't think that they had the best AI, the best quality merch. It's actually such a good service. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of ways that I use Kittle to make my graphic design life more fun, more enjoyable, and to help me speed up what can sometimes be a long or tedious project to send to the client. So with that being said, the first part of this video is going to be focusing on artificial intelligence. I usually wouldn't use the final outcome AI has given me. It's often something that helps me with the conceptualization of a project or coming up with ideas that I otherwise wouldn't have come up with. And just getting a bunch of sketches and color palettes and everything like that off the bat, which can often take hours out of a design project and help me get straight to the fun part. So I'm gonna be using two case studies for customers that I've had recently. One of which is a Cali weed dispensary. Now I do not condone or promote the use of any substances on this channel, but it is legal in this part of the world so I took the project and I'm so impressed with what AI did for me the level of artwork that the AI gave me it's like it read my mind for this client project and a lot of it didn't actually need changing which is just insane so my client hit me up after finding one of my backwards videos that I made many many years ago and the goal of the project was to create a Cali pack design he essentially wanted a Cali pack and the business is called Pac-Man so I took this into AI inside of Kittle you can actually now feed the AI the type of image or style of of artwork that you want it to base the generations off. So I fed it an image of the original Pac-Man game, the retro, the old school, the first Pac-Man games. I wanted it to be very two-dimensional and nostalgic. And therefore the first designs it gave me were two-dimensional. They were pretty simple and remained true to the original Pac-Man aesthetic. And I thought these were very cool. I then asked the AI to make these designs three-dimensional whilst using the same reference image of the original Pac-Man. And what it did here blew my mind. It's imagined an old school two dimensional retro game and it's brought it into shiny three dimensional graphics, almost as if a triple A gaming studio reimagined and created a game for Pac Man. I was blown away by this. The client absolutely loved this aesthetic and we ended up rolling with these for the pack designs. I mocked it up onto a pack. The hardest part, because we both loved the visuals so much, was working out where we could interrupt the visuals to put a window on the packs. But we figured it out and this was a successful client project made possible by the wonders of AI. So like I said, you're not always going to be using the final outcome. I often take the best characters, the best elements and the best text from AI, rearrange it and create my own final outcome. But every now and then you're going to be mind blown and you might not even need to do that. I like to be transparent when I'm working with clients. I let them know that I've used AI and I often try to hold back from sending them an abundance of AI designs because it can confuse them. I might generate 30 designs for a client project but maybe they'll only see the top five or the most relevant five. And I've got another case study for a Moroccan food tour company called My Nomadic Kitchen. The direction, the aesthetic, the ethos of this company is an organic food tour made by a chef who lives in Morocco who travels whilst cooking organic food for the customers, for the people on holiday. And once again, this was a design that at the start, I used AI to help me bring it to life. I took AI's ideas on text and images and I composed my own piece. So once again, I fed the AI a reference image and I used the aesthetic of flat apps, you know, the kind of trend in app logos where everything is kind of bubbly and a fixed width and everything is flat graphics. Put this image in as the reference point. Then I asked it to start creating elements for an organic food company from cash Camels to tagines to actual food elements like bits of garlic and leaves and stuff like that so that I had a bunch of things and an aesthetic to work with right off the bat saving me a huge amount of time but I liked what it was giving me so much that I asked it to take this aesthetic and these elements and imagine a logo with the name of the company in it with the text and do 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 it gave me some incredible stuff once again the client was pleased with this Unlike with the Pac-Man designs, I did end up tweaking these, shuffling bits around, changing the size, cutting parts of it out to arrive at the final destination, which they're now gonna use. If you wanna travel around Morocco eating amazing food whilst having cooking lessons, check out My Nomadic Kitchen. The link will be in the description. So there's a few ideas for you revolving around artificial intelligence and how it can speed up and inspire you as a graphic designer. AI doesn't have to take over, but if you think about the artists that are gonna be using AI versus the ones who aren't, 
moment, there is going to be a drop off in time and effectiveness and efficiency. And though you might argue that AI is imperfect and it's going to make mistakes, you can use what it does to help you get where you need to be as building blocks or use elements of it or even just take the inspiration that it's given you and use that to make your own masterpiece. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. And I think that will save you in the robot takeover. You're not going to be the last guy hand painting on a canvas to get a color palette, which you then pull into Photoshop. A lot of things can be done for you. There is always going to be a magic in that authentic artist. However, there's a lot of places where I think the implementation of AI will only be beneficial and there won't even be a drop in the final outcomes quality. And with that being said, when you have a sponsored video, people doubt whether you actually really fuck with the services because of course you're being paid. But I want to let you guys know, since using Kittle, I genuinely haven't used any other AI services. I do think this is the best one on the internet. And for the price of the memberships and the generations that you can get, I think there's no other service that compares at the moment it's AI for artists and there's even logo generation AI and the ability to customize it after it's created. It's unbelievable. Go give it a go down in the description and I'm going to jump into my next methods to streamline your work process as an artist. Inside of Kittle, there's also templates which are going to help you speed things up a lot. There's templates for everything from Y2K logo templates to merchandise ideas to fully customizable posters for your branding or to promote some event that's coming up. It can really do all of that for you and it's copyright free, royalty free. You can scale up your business inside of Kittle, not worrying about whether it's gonna become a legal issue, which is huge. I know there's a lot of designers out there throwing no shame. I used to be one of them. I didn't understand all the copyright laws you could and couldn't use, but that they create logos, they create designs, not owning the fonts or the usage rights, and they can't give their customers that peace of mind. But when you create things in Kittle, from the mock-ups to the AI logos, to the fonts that you use, you can tell your clients that they can sleep sound, can scale up their business knowing that they're they're not going to run into copyright problems down the line, which is huge. It's a huge sales point to let your clients know that off the bat. You can open up multiple canvases on one page. You can save and duplicate your artwork and change pieces of it. You can change the color palette of the work that you've already created in just a few clicks at the bottom of your Kittle page. You can browse their massive selection of commercially free to use fonts. So all around, I feel like Kittle, kind of the Adobe Illustrator of Google Chrome, is a great way for beginners and professionals to speed up their design process, to speed up their client work without dropping the quality of the final outcome that's important guys right you can take shortcuts you can use AI you can do all these things but if the shortcuts are resulting in a drop of quality and all your artworks looking the same or it's looking like it's made by AI then even though you can get stuff done quickly you will be paying the price your artwork will be less well reciprocate reciprocated by your customers so that's something to keep in mind don't compromise don't compromise don't compromise maximize efficient size strategize and capitalize anyway shout out to Kittle once again for promoting this video i've got some absolute photoshop bangers coming up involving some of the sickest plugins that everybody needs so make sure you stick around for that if you're new to the channel subscribe hit the notification bell comment i read every single comment with my eyes shut because i'm a genius like that video or dislike that video see you in the next one come on, come on, come on.